Who guides the guardians? Police officers in DCF, who are mandated to report as both of them and work side by side. They often do cases that, when you have abuse and neglect, may eventually be sent to the local, state, and federal police, along with the district attorney's office, what's called the same interview, and determine whether criminal charges and jail should be in order for some of the accused of abuse and neglect. With that said, what's really scary is that all over this great country of ours, we have police officers that are being charged with abuse and neglect. There's been recent cases where a police officer in Ohio, another one in Oregon, and one in New York, were utilizing sexual materials and sexual abuse in children. I have, in my family, police officers. I have friends that are police officers. I have classmates from law school that are police officers. And I have people in my life that are part of law enforcement. And I have the greatest respect for all of them because they do indeed serve and they do indeed protect. And they do something every day that I wouldn't want to do and that's put a gun on their hip and go out into the streets, the crazy streets of Boston and other cities and towns throughout this great country of ours. And they protect all of us. But are there always a few bad apples in the barrel? Of course there is. And it's not just police officers, it's every segment of our society that people make errors, omissions, and mistakes, or they do something they are not supposed to do. And I think to take down the police and just paint with a broad brush, that's not fair either. It's like paint with a broad brush regarding DCF. That's not fair. There are some tremendous police officers. There are some tremendous DCF social workers. And there's also some rats. So there's bad cops, and there are some rats that work for DCF and some bad social workers. That's life. And there are also bad lawyers and bad, bad, bad segments of our society in every walk of life. There is no monopoly on one segment of society, whether it's police or DCF social workers or lawyers that are rat faces, that do the wrong thing, that they have the monopoly on bad behavior. That just doesn't happen. So we have to peel back the onion and look at what is or is not going on. Then don't throw rocks. Let's seek solutions. Let's solve these problems together. It's the only way we're gonna make our society, our country, well. The police, they're not immune to allegations of sexual abuse and participating in abusing children. They are the guardians who serve and protect our society, but they also cross that line. And when they do, that's a problem because it violates all of us because we instill our trust in our government, in our police officers, in our DCF people. In every walk and fashion of life, we must depend on somebody. We gotta trust someone to do something to protect us. And we do that with the police as the guardians, with DCF as social workers. And yet we have all types of situations dealing with DCF where children are being injured in foster homes. Recently, there was a case for sexual abuse down in Florida, where a child was brutally, brutally sexually abused. And in Florida, of all the states, who has too many cases, you read about them all the time, it seems like it's prevalent down there. Must be something in the water. And they said it was one of the worst cases they've ever seen. Now, if a child's in foster care, don't think about this too long, but somebody had to put that child in foster care call the DCF worker. And somebody's supposed to, I'm not saying they do, but the child's supposed to be visited on a regular basis, monthly, by DCF. Was that done? There's also an attorney appointed to that child. Did that attorney do its due diligence and visit that child? Perhaps with COVID-19, they probably did Zoom calls, which really is scary because now, how many children are out there in foster care? that are being visited by social workers, understandably so, by Zoom calls, and by their attorneys by Zoom calls, that aren't being seen in person, and aren't being spoken to in person, and when they're on these Zoom calls, the foster parents are in the background. And obviously when a kid gets off the Zoom call, if the child rats the foster parents out, they're gonna abuse the kid even worse. So the sexual abuse thing in foster care is a very systemic problem that we need to deal with. And we need to have safe for safeguards. And again, who guides the guardians? It's supposed to be DCF. It's 
It's supposed to be the police. Sometimes it's violated. And when it is, we all are violated. Because we all look to them as the guardians to protect us all in our most prized possession, our children. 